Um, okay, let's move on to talk about another titan of the industry. We're going to talk about Spielberg with Ready Player One. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to let you take this one full control here. So the movie's a full price, DN. Goodbye. <laughs> and you actually read the book, right? Um, in all honesty, I listened to the audio book and it was, um, I can't remember the name of the guy that did it, but everyone I've oh. talked to about it. He's read it incredibly. Like that was that was my entry into audiobooks, and it was, ma, uh, the guy who read the audiobook or the guy who wrote the book. The guy who read the audiobook. Oh, okay. And yeah, the, if you get a good if you get a good reader of the book, it changes everything. Yeah, he added things. Like I I thought to myself, like how would I have read this? And the fact that he was reading it and he did it in his certain style, it's like man, I I wouldn't have thought about doing that. Like I wouldn't have seen this character as this, but. Now that he's done that, I don't think I can see it any other way. And I like Uh, it so much better. So it says Will Wheaton was the narrator for the Ready Player One audiobook. Yeah, Will Wheaton. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Will Wheaton. Um, Okay, and so overall, so do you think, like, like looking at the trailer, can you get a good sense of if it stays close enough to the book or if it veers away from the book too much or... So there's, um, I was talking to um, a friend of mine and um, we just bring up different key points because we both... um, Listen to the audiobook version, mm-hmm. and there it's there's pretty spot on. They're they're do, gonna do what most movies do, and they're gonna follow like the first one third of the the book as like gospel, because okay. everything I noticed from like the earlier um, parts of the book is just yeah that's one for one, one for one. Okay, you change that one little part, but everything's just pretty much solid. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't want to spoil anything, I don't want to tell people what it is, but they uh. Um, the whole race thing, I, I will kind of spoil that a little bit, but the whole race thing, that was not in the book. Right, because uh, the element, the whole element, I'm kind of like a little turned off by this trailer is the whole big kind of YA element of the, you know, rebellion and you're the guy, you're the leader, kind of like you're in, you know. Yeah, and then the, the rebellion was in the really, um, not in real life at least, like it was all in the VR world. Like mm-hmm. um, when you see them like intense and all that stuff, I'm like, what is this shit? <laughs> That's why I said when you get to the later parts, like everything is kind of changed. Like the the VR world stays the same, seems like, but everything in the real world is somewhat different. Mm. Yeah, Spielberg has been known to change things though a lot. Go look at uh, the Jaws movie for a huge example of the differences between that and the book. Mm. Okay, yeah, I forgot Jaws had a book. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, had a book. Okay, I mean, so do you think like a lot of it is going to be a bunch of pop culture references? Like, do you think it's it, oh, it's the book is based around it. Like, uh, okay, mm-hmm. so um, James Holiday, which is the guy that started this whole thing about, I mean, this whole um contest to get his fortune, right? Which is played he, by Mark Rylance in the movie, who looks like he could honestly care less to be there. <laughs> Man, I I was off about that a little bit, but either way, like I'll I'll wait until they show him because he was supposed to be like. People considered him autistic, basically. Like, he never really talked much. Mm-hmm. You got rare interviews with him. He They had, like, one scene of him dancing, whatever, in the book. Mm-hmm. But um, to make a long story short, he's the one hosting this contest that starts the movie. Yeah. And it's to get his fortune because he just passed away. And he released a message off to everybody because he's made, like, basically the Internet 2.0, which is the oasis of VR world where everybody does everything in there. Like, you want to do your taxes? You're probably doing that shit in VR. <laughs> but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, he um, he does this stuff, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm getting, I'm missing the point for a second. Right, you just, you just, you just so in, enticed by this trailer, you're just, I am, you're drooling sh- over it. I'm huh? shaking, yeah, because this, like, this is my thing. This is VR. Like, I like the technology of it all, but uh, James Holiday, he created all this stuff so that people can get the fortune. Um, I'm sorry, man. I'll just be honest with you. I'm so hyped right now. I missed the question. Right. Okay. So what I'm saying is, so. Like I said, with the trailer in the book, and you looking at the like the trailer, I mean, you said elements that weren't in the book, like the whole YA element of the rebellion, all that type of stuff. He's saying the rebellion was just in the virtual world, right? Yes, and as far as like um, him even meeting up with the girl wasn't supposed to happen until the very end. Like that's how you close it off. Mm, okay, but uh, just so many different things are different um in that element. But I like that they keep the VR world the same way. Um, 
James Holiday, he does look like he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy that he they chose him as a character. I'm just just happy that they chose him as a character because he looks the part, in my opinion. Okay. Um. So so is James Holiday supposed to be like a Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs type of guy? He is uh. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Okay. Yeah, like I guess that's the best way to put him. Right. Because he's he's not a cocky guy or anything. Like I said, he they they he's more shrewdish. Okay. And is Ty Sheridan what you imagined as far as the lead character in the book? Is it like what he imagined? What you, you imagine him to be? You said it's who? Uh, Ty Sheridan is what is he? What you imagined like the lead character of the book to be? Look wise, personality wise. I say yeah. Like um. He he fits it good enough. Like I don't. If in all honesty, like they could put a bunch of people in his role. Like he doesn't have a distinct look, in my opinion. Right. He's just an audience avatar type character. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, it's like in, in that situation, like he he seems like like he went to VR for certain reasons and all that stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like it's all about his VR character. It's like let's make sure that that VR character looks the same way that people envisioned him. Okay. Um. In the virtual world, is that like you think that is fully realized as it can be? In my opinion, yes. Like they did a close zoom in of his face while he's um Parsifal, which is um his VR character. Mm. And it's it's like four K graphics. Well, I like to think it's like four K graphics. I need to like zoom in, get a magnifying glass or whatever, but mm. it looks well detailed. It looks good enough in my opinion. Okay. And it looks like something you'll see on the Xbox One X or whatever. Okay. All right. So okay. So you're really hyped for it. I am, man. Like it's it's got so much going for it. And like I said, they're changing a few things, but I'm hoping it's going to work for the better. Like I, I trust Steven Spielberg. I don't think I've ever disliked the movie from him. Okay. Uh, or, D- Dust, what do you think? Really? War Horse? Yeah. That, I was going to say that I've watched. I had to mention that just a second ago. Hmm, okay. Uh, so Dust, what, I mean, what do you think about it? Um, um, changes from the books aside. It looks interesting. I'm curious about all the properties they've gotten it. That in a, alone is interesting that we can finally kind of have these mix of different genres all in one. Hmm. And uh, I am I am liking that. Uh, what the story will actually be about and that, I I don't know. And I'm going to be honest, frankly, I don't care. I am, uh. I am hoping it's a decent one. But if there's not, this seems like the kind of movie that just kind of is more focused on showing visually this huge virtual war world and oh putting everything in in front of it oh i'm sorry so if i if i can cut in for a moment i just want to say the one moment um the one thing i missed was um james holiday he instilled the 80s references within everyone he was very heavily he i think he was um, born in the 80s whatever and grew up Mm -hmm. in the 80s as a teenager Mm -hmm. so he was trying to just put his ideals onto people like you have to know everything about me if you want to win this game and get my fortune. So what ideals from the eighties did he? Just every eighties ref pop culture reference. Like they, oh, okay. like as much as like I might love the nineties because you know my name is nineties. Mm-hmm. It's like if I were to have a fortune and I were to die, the mm-hmm. whole world would be scrambling trying to get my fortune, and they would have to learn everything about me. So they would just instill a, all these references from the nineties. Okay, so if he was... and that's that's why the movie has all these um eighties characters and all that. That's what I meant to say. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. All right, um, because there's lots of different characters in this. Like you have, you know, Chun Li from Street Fighter, Tracer from Overwatch. Yeah, so that's, Overwatch was the only thing that was mostly modern day. Yeah, I, yeah, that's like the most modern that uh, modern day. It's thing also I Blizzard, said. and it got a shit ton of money. Yeah, yeah, you got that right. Well, there goes that cursing bill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, so mostly tons of '80s references like that. Uh, Battletoads, I saw on the front line. Yeah, Battletoads. You saw Ninja Turtles, Raphael. Yeah. You saw Gundam, Chucky. Chucky, that was a fun one. Yeah, Chucky, <laughs> Chucky slicing was, somebody's yeah. face open. Yeah, King Kong. You saw that one. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I don't, I don't understand that at all because that's that's not in the book. That well, caught me off guard. I guess they're just throwing everything in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah, King Kong. King Kong ain't got nothing on this. Yeah, looking for white women, even in the virtual <laughs> world, King Kong has to do that. So. um it's coming out March 3rd next year. March yes, 3rd. and when that comes out, I will have my ultimate VR rig. I'm ready. Mm. I'm ready. 4K, 8K, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks exciting. Um, I mean, the whole premise of like, okay, this is a special object that you got to find. So, I mean, that. I mean, depending on how you do it, it could be very interesting. It could be a lot of fun. 
Um, and depending on how they handle all the references, all the pop culture stuff, it's not just, hey, look at this, hey, look at that. Um, that could be really interesting. Um, so, I mean, I, I can't wait for it. Looks really exciting. Um, I'm definitely pumped for it. Um, all right. So let's uh, move on to. Hello, thanks for checking out our content. If you liked it, let us know. And if you didn't, let us know that as well. If you want to see more content, we post every Saturday on SoundCloud and YouTube at The Afternoon Tune. You can also find us through various social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, all one word at The Afternoon Tune. And if you don't deal with any of that social media stuff, you can also find us through our email at TheAfternoonTune at gmail.com. And don't forget to always stay tuned.